Thank you very much. Uh, as uh, she mentioned, I'm a medical physicist. Uh, it's not the same lecture, so you change the topic and I had to think something new. <laughs> Uh, I'm not very, very in deep in the sentinel biopsy, but I'm deep in the radiation protection stuff, so I will try to speak uh, in uh, this uh, direction. Um, so we have different diagnostic imaging modalities that we can use uh, as a diagnostic or as a screening uh, methods in uh, breast cancers. Some of them use ionizing radiation, so we have to think about our safety, about our radiation safety. Others uh, doesn't use ionizing radiation, so they are more safe for the patient, more safe for the uh, personnel that is uh, working with uh, this patient or with this modality. Uh, typically, we have this situation. The modalities that use ionizing radiation, they can induce uh, radiation-induced cancer in the breast because the breast is uh, a tissue that is sensitive to radiation. So typically we don't want to push the button that is to cause cancer. We push uh, the button uh, to detect cancer and we would like to work in that direction. Uh, what is the exposure that is connected with uh, these uh, modalities that are uh, used for um, uh, Diagnostic, as a diagnostic process for breast cancer. Uh, some of them are equal to the irradiation from our natural, natural background radiation. This is uh, the digital tomosynthesis, uh, digital mammography, and also uh, the dedicated uh, CBCT for uh, breast imaging. Others, like the old, now I hope in most countries it is an old uh, imaging modality, the film screen mammography, uh, is a little bit with higher dose, and then the dedicated breast uh, CT examinations and also the film screen mammography, but with two projection is the one that is equal to the irradiation like two to three years from the natural background. Uh, there are different studies uh, that are dedicating to, on the effectiveness of the different methods uh, and the dose connected with these methods. So um, most of them are connected with the screening because it's really important when we, do, we, when we perform screening to use a modality that is not connected with so much irradiation and that it can further in, uh, induce uh, cancer because of this irradiation. So mammography with uh, CR cassettes is equivalent to mammography with the GR cassettes as a visualization of the microcalcification, but it, uh, the dose with the GR is two times lower than the one with the CR machines. So if we are in a position to choose what, what type of mammography machine to buy, we would like to buy the GR. Uh, the Canadian screening program also find the same situation. GR is equivalent to film screen mammography in terms of cancer diagnosis but uh, with a 30% lower dose. Uh, the Belgian screening program says that GR is equi equivalent to CR as uh, cancer diagnosis rates, rates but 60% lower dose for the GR. Uh, other studies uh, that are uh, in concern with the digital breast tomosynthesis also say that if we perform digital breast tomosynthesis in one projection, it is good, at least as good or better than the digital mammography in two projection as what we see as diagnostic quality, but at the same dose level. So again, we have to choose wisely according to the patient, according to the situation, which one to, to, to use for the, that special patient. Uh, in dedicated breast cities, uh, I saw on the last uh, congresses, the last two years, there is a lot of this type of machines that are shown uh, on the exhibitions. Uh, cities machines with a hole dedicated for breast examinations. So the dose is comparable to the uh, 2D mammography, uh, but the visualization of some low contrast masses is better uh, and the one with microcalcification is worse because uh, we have worse resolution for the CT compared to the um, 2D mammography. Uh, what about the sentinel node bio biopsy? 
uh, uh, you heard a lot about this. It's a basic technique uh, that is used. Uh, we use injection of a tracer that identifies the lymphatic drainage pathway from the primary tumor, but um, the, it can be uh, connected with some uh, irradiation because of radioisotope that is used. So the earliest applications are with the vital blue dye. Uh, then it is uh, found that it's generally safe. Uh, anaphylaxis can occur in 1% uh, of the patients. Uh, then a new uh, technology uh, started to develop, so new surveys uh, started and uh, uh, the technetium uh, is uh, the radioisotope that is found as a good isotope that can be used for the sentinel dot uh, uh, node biopsy. Uh, different um, countries, uh, also uh, if we are in USA or Europe or Aust Australia, we can use different type of uh, uh, bound colloid uh, that is connected with the technetium that can be used, uh, but uh, the differences are not uh, too much. Um, so we use this radioactive uh, material in uh, the radiopharmaceutical. Uh, it is in the operating theater room and it can generate uh, significant concerns in the medical staff about what is really the radiation exposure. As a medical physicist, I was asked many times uh, what is the exposure from this? Is it safe? Is it not safe? If uh, the surgeon is also pregnant, can she continue working or not? Uh, do we need something additional for protection or not? Uh, so these concerns are, concerns are often and it's really big issue between the medical personnel. How it, uh, what is the pathway of the radiopharmaceuticals? They can be produced as uh, in industrial manufacturing uh, conditions or they can be used, uh, produced in-house. Uh, in Bulgaria, I think we have two hospitals that can produce, three hospitals that can produce in-house different type of radiopharmaceuticals. Uh, then it is inject injected to the uh, patient and after some uh, period we can detect the uh, gamma or beta emitter, uh, the emitters from the, this radiopharmaceutical uh, with a proper uh, machine uh, and to see where it is, where is the place uh, that uh, it is emitting from. Uh, uh, we use typically really low activity uh, for the patient. Uh, uh, the use of these radioactive level tracers creates exposure to radiation of medical staff but how much? This is the question. Uh, we have different uh, reports that are available in the literature about the radiation safety of this procedure and what actually is this absorbed dose uh, of the different body sites, of the different body parts of the surgeon during this uh, sentinel node biopsy. Uh, it is assumed that the rest of the medical staff, the remaining uh, uh, personnel in this uh, uh, theater, operating theater room will receive less radiation uh, compared to the surgeon because the surgeon is one that is really close to the patient. The other staff is far away from the patient. And we have in the physics this inverse square law that says that if we double the distance from the source, the dose will go two times, uh, we will receive two times lower dose. So if you just step uh, one meter uh, away from the patient, the dose, the dose goes significantly lower. If you are two or three meters, there is actually nothing, uh, even from a huge, like if the whole patient is emitting something. But here we are talking about some small spot, like a source, uh, point source that is emitting, so the radiation goes down really, really fast. Uh, so here is uh, the process, uh, how we inject, how we detect, what we use as an imaging modality to detect, how we um, do this, uh, how we extract this node. Uh, 
and uh, also some conditions you are more familiar than me, <laughs> what should be seen or not to say if this is sentinel lift node or not. Uh, this is a typical example. What is the dose that's injected? It can be one uh, millicurie or two millicurie. It depends on the protocol that is followed. Typically, it's two. Then uh, the sentinel node can be really easily found. Uh, it is really sensitive, uh, the, the probe that is used to this irradiation. Uh, the typical time interval between the injection and then the surgery is uh, 24 hours if it is two days protocol. And then the mean operation time, we can assume it's uh, 90 minutes. It depends uh, how uh, easy it is to be performed or, or not. But these are like mean numbers that we can use and then start to calculate what is the irradi irradiation of the medical staff. So uh, the irradiation of the hands, because the hands are the closest to, this, our, to, uh, to our point source, is really low. We have three main um, surveys that uh, we can read if you are curious to see the details. But uh, the first one says that the absorbed dose is uh, radiation to the hands of the physician who injected the radio tracer, the surgeon and the scrap nurse. Uh, they say that the maximum recorded dose is for the physician actually that is injecting the radio tracer and then is the surgeon that is performing the operation. But still you can see the numbers. It's really huge difference between in the, in the very beginning when we have the highest activity and then 24 hours later. Uh, the absorbed dose for scrap nurse is similar to that of the surgeon. And uh, the maximum recorded dose during the sentinel node biopsy is uh, 2,020 times sm smaller than our one-year dose limit as occupational exposure. We have uh, a number that is 20 millisieverts that says if we are lower than that one, it's okay to work in uh, such uh, conditions. So we don't have a higher risk compared to other uh, work, uh, our uh, other professions or other. Uh, things that happen to us in our daily life. Uh, another survey says that the radiation dose to the theater nurse, the pathologist also, because the pathologists are also another group that is really wo worried about their irradiation, and his assistant is beneath the detection limit of 10 millisieverts. So it even can, can be detected by the detector that we use. Uh, the higher measured doses uh, are again in the hands of the surgeon uh, and again it's not so big number because the dose for the annual dose for hands is 500 millisieverts. 20 millisieverts is for the bo body, it's called effective dose, but the one for the hands is 500 millisieverts. Uh, another survey again says it's really low dose that is received by the hands and by the abdominal wall of the uh, surgeon. So if we consider this dose limit of 500 millisieverts for skin and we take these numbers from the surveys, from the calculations, so one surgeon to reach that limit should perform more than 9,000 sentinel node uh, procedures without exceeding the dose limits. I don't think that somebody can reach this number for one year. So we are safe <laughs> to work uh, uh, during these uh, procedures. Um, the radiation doses are low, so we don't need any additional procedures for protection of uh, the medical staff. Uh, if you would like, you can put something on you, these lead aprons, but still you don't need them. Uh, so if we follow this usual procedure for biohazards in place in our theater room, actually you are following also your procedures for, protect, uh, for radiation protection. Uh, injecting and imaging on the day before surgery is preferred compared with injecting and imaging before surgery in the same day. So the two days protocols, a protocol also assure us a good radiation safety. In this way, we will receive lower radiation doses to medical staff. We will work with lower activity in that field, in the surgery field. Uh, also lower activity in the excised specimens and waste, and uh, it will provide a higher count rate, uh, giving better image quality. What about the pathologist? 
if you have friends or if we have here, I don't know. Uh, so in the very beginning, uh, they were waiting 20, uh, 48 and 72 hours before examination of these specimens. But all later studies showed that actually you don't need to wait more than 72 hours and it's really rare a condition that needs to wait so long in order to, uh, to examine the specimen. Uh, additional studies focus on the Sentinel node uh, itself and they show that we don't have any significant radiation that is uh, uh, associated with these specimens once they are reach the pathology uh, laboratory. And uh, so the pathologists can perform more than uh, 14,000 hours of work before reaching these occupational safety and health uh, uh, limits. So still, <laughs> it's not a number that can be re easily reachable. Uh, again, one survey that says that radiation doses received by pathology staff will be predominantly below measurable levels and are likely to be negligible unless primary specimens from a large number of studies are analyzed uh, promptly upon their ex um, excision. Uh, uh, what about the patient? Also, the patient worries, and you're talking with the, you're the one that communicates with the patient. So the radiation risk to patient is also consequently low relative, uh, uh, low relative to that from many other medical exposure. We have a lot of medical exposures that are connected with a higher dose. And when I speak with patients, um, it's not okay to tell them it's like you two or five days uh, if you're outside from our natural back, um, background radiation. I started to speak with them uh, what, what they think about their flight for uh, their holiday. So they don't worry that they will fly somewhere on the islands and how long they will be irradiating from our cosmic uh, irradiation, but they worry about such kind of procedure. So I started to speak with the patient in this way. Um, and you can see uh, what is the equivalence as hours of flying. Uh, from uh, the procedures. It was the same situation with pregnant patients. Again, when they like flying, they don't worry for the, about the baby when they fly, but they worry to make some examination. So, uh, because I mentioned the pregnancy, one slide for the pregnancy, what do we do with uh, pregnancy and breast imaging and biopsies? So, uh, the breast uh, cancer during pregnancy is uh, with the frequency one in 3,000 and the sentinel lymph node biopsy is uh, assumed to be safe with negligible risk to the fetus. Uh, the injected radioisotope remains within this injected volume, within this area of, in the breast, uh, and it can stay in the lymphatic system. Uh, we have really, really small amount of this injected activity that can go and start circulating in the blood pool. Uh, and uh, it is usually um, excreted by the excretory system in the very first hours of the injection. Uh, the colloid injection in the morning and one day protocol, uh, it's, uh, not the, it's uh, the best option uh, in order that we will have shorter time for uh, this node to stay inside the body with uh, the uh, radioisotope. Uh, what about the blue dye? Uh, we have some possible risk of uh, maternal allergic or uh, anaphylactic reaction because of it. So it is more dangerous uh, and it can be avoided. Uh, the radiation exposure of the fetus from the administered radiocolloid is very low and does not increase the risk of this prenatal death or anything connected with congenital malformations or some mental disorders. Uh, on the other hand, the blue dye should not be used definitely by the recommendations in uh, pregnant patients. And again, what is the exposure in our daily life or uh, the exposure from, from ionizing radiation? Yes, we worry that we work with something that is set its radiation, but we don't worry from the things that happen in our daily life. So you can see what are the doses from airplane flight. Uh, if we have 16 hours airplane flight, 
Uh, we have some irradiation uh, from the food uh, with potassium-40. If you eat bananas and meat, <laughs> you, know, you have it. If you go for a whole body counting, you can see a peak from this potassium in your body. Everybody has it. Uh, so we have it in the drinks. Uh, we have it if we go to spa procedures, uh, uh, some mineral springs. Um, we have it in the building. And it depends on the material that is used in the buildings, in the soils. Uh, it depends how high we are in the mountain also. And uh, then on the right uh, side, you can see diff different um, uh, X-ray examinations for the patients and the doses that uh, they receive. Uh, so now I will switch to one demonstration. If you need to speak with your colleagues and demonstrate what is the irradiation from different sources, there are a lot of online calculators that you can play with and uh, check. Even if you need to speak with your patient, again, it's useful to demonstrate, also to give the patient to play alone and to check what is this uh, irradiation. Um, no. Okay, so this is one um, uh, calculator, calculator that we can use. You can check uh, if you have any X-ray, nuclear medicine, or other diagnostic imaging procedure in the last 20 months. So you can do it for yourself and say, okay, it was COVID, so I have an X-ray procedure. So yes, let me check that. And then you can see what type of. Uh, so let's say thoracic spine something. We had it once per year. So it adds to the right side what are the doses. Then you can say, um, okay, what is the region where I live? This one is for the US, but still you know where these places are. So let's say we are close to the seaside and we will check the Atlantic coast. Again, you can see what is your background irradiation. What about the cosmic radiation? So where do we live? The higher we are as an attitude, the highest the dose. <laughs> so it's better to live on the seaside, especially during summer. Let's check, okay, up to 1,000 meters, we are, or this is in feet, so yes, we are here. Uh, what the internal irradiation? So it is said that internal irradiation from food and water is, this is in millirems, but we can easily go to millisieverts. So again, if we have some porcelain crowns or false teeth in our mouth, yes, surprisingly, it also irradiates us. So we have another source that is irradiating us. What about the travel-related sources? How many miles have you traveled by jet this year? So I don't know about the miles because as a physicist, yes, I cannot calculate them easily, but let's say many, 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 I don't know, put some number, one, something like that. Uh, so how many times did you go through a screening machine? You know, there are some airports with screening machines. And again, we have some irradiation from there, but it is uh, mentioned that it's equivalent to two minutes or three minutes more in the plane. So it's still negligible. So yes, maybe I had it twice. Then um, are X-ray luggage inspection machines used at your airport? Why? Because you stay close to that. Everybody is curious to see what is on the monitor, <laughs> but you're close to the X-ray machine. Yes, it is protected, but still it's not the best way to check what, what they see. So yeah, I had it. Um, Okay, then these gas lantern mantles uh, for camping, they are also with radioactive source because it is blue, really nice one with really nice light. So let's say maybe I was using, and we have a lot of other sources. Um, so we are radiation worker. We can put our annual exposure. So mine is typically to low, but let's say one. Um, how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke per day? You will be really surprised. Also, you're irradiating yourself from smoking. I'm not smoking. Uh, then, uh, do you live in a stone, brick, or concrete building? You can put this, yes, again, irradiation. Uh, smoke detector, if you have in place, they also work with uh, radioactive sources. This is the way they are uh, detecting that there is smoke. Um, 
Okay, then what about the radon? This is the major one after smoking that is um, uh, uh, leading to, uh, uh, to lung cancer. So yes, this is also a big issue. We have to, to check it. Have you tested at home? Maybe no, because we didn't know about that. So finally, we can see what is our uh, calculation, what we receive uh, as irradiation, and you can see, yes, it's uh, not a big deal actually to work with our uh, notes uh, with the technetium. Uh, still, we have other and other sources, and maybe it's equivalent to the one that we are receiving from the uh, uh, other things that we have. And now what I did again, I have to go back to my presentation, yes. So here is uh, the milliamps and the sieverts, how we tra transfer them. But in USA, they like everything to be different, so they use different uh, units. So this is another one calculated, uh, calculator that is uh, dedicated to uh, medical irradiation and procedures. Again, you can check another one that is connected with our daily uh, duties, daily activities. Uh, another one that uh, it's really important to tell people that MRI and ultrasound are safe. We don't have ionizing radiation because in Bulgaria we don't use MRI as abbreviation. We use nuclear magnetic resonance and when they hear about nuclear in Bulgaria it's like radiation so they think they are irradiating again themselves. So if we need to conclude the surgeon that is performing the sentinel node biopsy procedure is only exposed to a minimal radiation risk far below this maximum permissible one and really lower than other colleagues uh, doing and uh, dealing with ionizing radiation in the hospital. Uh, the radiation doses to staff groups involved in all aspects of this technique are low under norm and under normal circumstances and levels of workload. Actually, we cannot reach our annual dose limits. Uh, if we just follow the standard biohazards precautions, then we will also um, um, be safe from radioactive uh, contamination. And then this radioactive waste is creating in the operating theater room, but still, if we follow these biohazard uh, procedures, it's okay, and we will not spread this, uh, we will not make this contamination in our working field. What uh, is the way? We have three main rules how to be uh, safe, radiation safe, uh, and the ALARA principle that says uh, we should be as low as reasonably achievable as a dose. So the first one is the time. The shortest the, st the time, the shortest the irradiation. So when we know what, with what we are dealing, we need to be faster uh, with the direct contact. Uh, then uh, the distance. I said about this inverse square law, the physics. Uh, so if we double the distance, twice lower will be the dose, and then shielding. So we, so we don't need actually shielding, but uh, if we need to, if we are too close, then we can put something, just in case if we decide to, it depends on the dose, but for the case, no. It's, this is, these are main three rules for radiation protection. Here are more references that were used, and thank you for listening to me. <laughs>